Moving on now, the United Nations has expressed alarm about the spillover of the Syrian crisis into neighboring countries. There is already evident spillover of the conflict in Lebanon and in Iraq. Jordan is in a very fragile economic situation. And if the fighting doesn't stop, we risk to have an explosion in the Middle East for which the international community is simply not prepared. Well, the UN also appealed for a record-breaking $4.4 billion in humanitarian aid for Syria. UN Emergency Relief Coordinator Valerie Amos said one in three Syrians is in need of urgent humanitarian assistance. The international body says the number of refugees is currently more than 1.5 million. It estimates that as the Syrian unrest continues with no end in sight, this number will rise to nearly 3.5 million by the end of the year. Lebanon and Jordan, which are now grappling with a flood of Syrian refugees, have joined the UN aid appeal, asking for donations of around $800 million. Syria has been gripped by deadly unrest since March 2011. Damascus says the chaos has been orchestrated from outside the country, and there are reports that a large number of the militants are foreign nationals. Let's go to Montreal and talk to Michael Tosadovsky with the Centre for Research on Globalization. Welcome to the programme, sir. Uh, Mr. Tosadovsky, the UN is warning of an explosion in the Middle East if the war on Syria continues. The question is that what has the UN itself done to prevent the war from exacerbating? Well, first of all, that statement was made by the head of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Uh, I, and the statement says if the fighting doesn't stop, the fighting is going to stop because the terrorists have been defeated. And uh, essentially, if, uh, if Western powers put a moratorium on their support to these al-Qaeda-affiliated rebels, the war is over. At least the ground war is over. And uh, recent developments suggest and confirm that uh, uh, the country is under the control of, of the Syrian government. The rebel forces have been defeated in, in al Qasir, uh, and they've also been defeated in other parts of the country. Uh, the question of humanitarian aid has to be, from, from my standpoint, from our standpoint, has to be addressed, because um, who are the protagonists of humanitarian aid, so-called humanitarian aid? Precisely the countries which supported these, uh, these rebel terrorists. And I think what we should be raising at this stage is well established that this war was waged uh, by the United States, NATO, and Israel with the support of the Gulf states, Qatar, Saudi Arabia in particular, and that under international law, what is now required are war reparations. So that I would say, let us, let us put the humanitarian dimension aside and focus on the billions and billions of dollars of war reparations, which are due to the Syrian government as a result of the illegal support of these terrorist formations uh, in Syria, which constitute essentially the ground forces, the foot soldiers of the Western Military Alliance. Indeed. I mean, I, the, yes, I mean, the recent victory in Gosseir and the recent revelation that uh, Israeli-made weapons were seized from Syrian insurgents, I mean, what impact will this have on the dynamics of the conflict? But we've known from day one that, that Israel has supported al-Qaeda. And we also know that, uh, that Israel has channeled weapons uh, and logistic support to the rebels uh, in the areas uh, uh, surrounding the, the occupied uh, uh, areas of the Golan Heights. And in fact, Israel even established a hospital facility for the Al-Qaeda rebels and, uh, and was uh, busing them back and forth, taking the wounded to the hospital, then sending them back to the war theater. Israel is, uh, was involved in acts of aggression against the sovereign state, together with uh, with NATO, uh, particularly Turkey, Britain, France, the United States, French and British special forces, SAS forces, MI6, uh, CIA agents were involved. We know it because it's documented. Who is training the rebels uh, in chemical weapons? The Western Military Alliance. Now, uh, Prime Minister Laurent Fabius of France comes up, and, and it's the typical sort of 
weapons of mass destruction saga, uh, accusing the government of using uh, chemical weapons against uh, civilians, when in fact CNN confirms that uh, Western forces are training the rebels in the use of chemical weapons, when the Turkish police arrests al-Qaeda rebels. Uh, it just happened a, a week or so ago. So we know that all this is fabrications whereby the Western military alliance is accusing the government of committing the atrocities which they themselves have committed. And what we must now tackle at an international level uh, is war reparations. The war is over unless, of course, the West decides to continue this war, uh, e.g. with a, a no-fly zone. That would be an extremely dangerous option at this stage because Syria has an advanced defense, uh, air defense system. Uh, the S-300 is in place. It has been prior, it, it has been building up over the last 18 months. Uh, there are other elements of air defense, and it would be very uh, unwise for the Western Military Alliance to impose uh, uh, a no-fly zone, uh, uh, which would immediately be uh, subject to some, uh, some kind of response. So that is the background. Right. Uh, this war has reached, uh, has reached, uh, um, I mean, it's reached a point of transition. All right. If, uh, if there's no intervention on the part of the Western Military Alliance, the war is over. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Many thanks, sir, to Michael Tosadovsky with the Center for Research on Globalization from Montreal.